to understand. I'm really trying to understand like what the argument, like what the, what the best argument is f for, because I hear so many people say, you know, you're the first person I've, I've heard argue for anonymous. Uh, being anonymous, remaining anonymous on the internet. I, I just hear, you know, I hear so many people say that's, you know, that's the issue. Cause so many people, I understand, you know, the comment section, it can hurt your feelings or whatever, you know, these assholes, you know, from their mom's basement, they shouldn't be able to make fun of me and call me stupid in the comment section. They should be able to have their real name on there. So I can, you know, cause you wouldn't be able to do that in real life. You couldn't walk up to somebody at the supermarket and say that shit to them or else, you know, it's going to result in violence or real violence so so getting rid of and on i hate that word anonymity <laughs> getting rid of that would kind of like would kind of resolve that issue and and you're saying that you know if, if you make it impossible to be anonymous online you're never going to solve the issue of privacy which essentially is what these algorithms are based on is people's privacy in order to make money and, you know, keep you in your same little echo chamber. So I'm just trying, I'm trying to understand the best argument for anonymity on the internet. And what you've already, you've already, you've already articulated very well. Um, I'm just trying to work my work through it myself, I guess. Mm, yeah. 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 I mean, I think that, uh, there are pla there are places online where just where do you want to spend your free time? Like, you know, do you want to spend it on the chans where people are people are poking the worst fucked up shit and and like celebrating atrocity? That's not where I want to spend my time. But but um, but then again, like, what is the the cost of not allowing anonymity in like on a place like Reddit or you know, especially. Once you end up in an environment, like we imagine that that society will remain the same. We imagine that, you know, that, that, that authoritarian impulses or fascists or whatever will not be in a positions of power and that we will not need anonymity to be able to communicate and organize. We imagine, if we imagine that, that um, governments are, are benevolent and cannot be corrupted and that we won't need anonymity, the shield of anonymity to be able to um, protect ourselves, to, to say things that, that might be disfavorable to those in powerful positions. If we really believe that, then sure, everything we should do should be in public, out in the open, and we can monitor everything at all times. That um, makes sense. There's a reason that, that privacy sense. is the Fourth Amendment, and there's a cost to every right. And however ugly some of the outcomes inevitably will be because of that right. I would rather have the right than surrender it um, because you never know when you're going to need it. People used to say that it didn't matter that our rights were, our privacy was being eroded online in 2012. And now we know the cost. And if our response to that is to get rid of, completely get rid of privacy, well, my God, we've just handed over the keys to you know, everyone in power, um, those who monitor us and have access to everything that we do already. That's, that's the state that we're at. So the, the turmoil and chaos that we're seeing in society right now, the arguments are like, well, we need to restrict the speech. We need to, we need to silence the people who have, um, disfavorable ideas or dangerous ideas, and we need to get rid of anonymity. And I think the opposite is the case. I think there was a lack of privacy that, that landed us here. Um, and I'm very concerned that that the very that the, the the lack of a right that landed us here is now being used to to take away more rights, um, and and I think that you know the Fourth Amendment is there for for a reason, and uh, it is a negotiation. You know, it's it's um, it's not it's what we're willing to accept. How much privacy we're willing to surrender in exchange for security. Um, and I think that's a question everybody has to ask themselves. But, you know, when Democrats were under Obama, they felt more comfortable with the government spying on them um, in exchange for security. You know, I think they felt less comfortable during the Trump years. Um, and I feel uncomfortable with it during all years. <laughs> so it doesn't matter who's in power. That's very well put. That's very well put. Um, 
what do you use as far as like everyday applications? Do you use like those encrypted text messaging apps, email apps, browsers? Like how far do you go in everyday life? Uh, as much as I can. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I uh, don't have a VPN turned on right now because our <laughs> internet connection is already <laughs> unstable. Uh, you know, um, I mean, I, I advocate, I've spent the last eight years teaching college students how to use encrypted services. You know, it's not because you have something to hide. It's because, it's because why do other entities have a right to everything that you do at all times, your thoughts? And you never know when you're going to need to have that privacy. You know, you never know who, when, what, what kind of regime may, may step into power. Um, and suddenly, suddenly your beliefs or things that you care about are dangerous or maybe even illegal. You know, um, what's legal today isn't necessarily legal tomorrow. And with a past being our permanent record, all of that stuff can be used against you. I mean, that's, we've seen that playing out in the, in the, you know, the last couple of years. Tweets that people said from a decade ago, now that culture doesn't accept that anymore or a certain thing that they might have said, it becomes, it becomes a weapon against them. So with all of our lives being a sort of a permanent record, you can see how much information and, 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 and sort of belief from the past has consequence in the present. And I feel like we're in a place now where it's not okay to be wrong anymore. And I think part of that is because we're beholden to everything we've ever said every second. So it, it, there, it's very difficult for people to change their minds. Um, and that's not a good place to be in for democracy, nor is it a good place when the right and the left can't communicate with each other. And there's lots of things that have bolstered that polarization. You know, I've obviously hit on the one I think is the biggest, but um, I mean, these things worry me. And it worries me that we're not going to have that people don't have faith in in uh, in in our elections. Trump got elected. The left didn't. The left thought it was stolen. Biden got elected. The right thought it was stolen. And I and I and look like we need to instill more faith in in elections for sure. Um, we could do that with paper ballots. You know, you can't hack paper. <laughs> it doesn't mean that people still won't come up with narratives to justify how it might have been stolen. They will. But at least we, there are things we can do to at least give people more faith and more trust in our elections. And if we don't have that going into the next election cycles, my God, man, I don't... And if we don't fix the privacy problem online, all of the things that, that, that created this polarized environment we're in right now, this kind of information war we witnessed online, it's only going to get worse. Um, so I don't like to be a doomsday prognosticator here, um, but I just haven't seen anything get fixed. I haven't seen any of this stuff get fixed since the Snowden links. Like I thought Snowden was, when he revealed that the NSA was doing this massive spying on everybody, and I thought that was going to change things. And like, they, they did like the smallest amount of reform, you know, they basically outsourced the metadata to a private company. And that was basically all that changed. Um, so uh, I, I don't have a great amount of optimism because these companies don't want to do anything that hurts their business model. And they're not going to offer up the solution that we need. Um, and there's plenty of people right now who uh, are looking, are seeing the the information state of the internet as a as a useful tool um, to gain power, and they will continue to leverage that. Um, and uh, and my fear is that is that in trying to suppress that we're we're just we're pulling the wrong levers um, to uh, to deescalate. Um, the the tensions that exist right now in society, and there are too many bad actors interested in in uh, fucking sh fucking <laughs> fucking everything up uh, and creating chaos for their own political gain.